Hi everyone. Hi Welcome to the July Garden Tour. Summer is here and the garden is in full swing. Now I think it's been about six weeks since we did the June Garden Tour and wow, everything is growing like crazy and I cannot wait to show you around. And Jerry, I want you to get just a little shot of a kind of a bird's eye view of the garden. You can see the beautiful flowers, the watermelon is growing like crazy. The passion fruit is just going nuts. And there's Mac down there. I think he just ate a tomato. <laughs> he never eats tomatoes. Uh, but we'll take you down and show you around in just a moment. But I wanted to start up, off up here on the deck and show you something fun that actually both Jerry and I have been trying to do. And that is we are desperately trying to get a hummingbird to eat out of our hand. And what we've been doing is sitting out here uh, a couple of nights now and using this little hummingbird ring. And I really wish they would come right now when we were filming. That would be just too perfect of a timing. And just holding it really, really still. You might have seen my post on Instagram. They've been actually coming really close, right about here. And I've been putting the ring in the hummingbird feeder. And of course, as soon as I walk away, they start eating from that. But let me know if you've ever tried that. Because a lot of people were giving me some tips on our live stream this week. So that'll be a lot of fun. Now, also the hanging baskets are really doing well. Now, if you've never grown in hanging baskets, I highly encourage you to do that. And don't grow just flowers. You can grow so many different vegetables in hanging baskets. Here we have my favorite little tiny Tim. And it's not gonna get super big. It's a very small uh, hanging basket here. And these have the uh, Smart Pots basket liners, which are really handy. They have great aeration. So you can actually grow larger uh, items in hanging baskets because of the Smart Pots liners. But it'll have just enough for me to pop out here during lunch, pick a little tomato, and I love the little red or the yellow perfusion zinnias here to give it a nice pop of color. And over here, I'm loving how the strawberries are just hanging over. I can come out here and pick them for breakfast. It's always nice to have the fruits and vegetables and herbs growing so close to the house so that we can just, you know, come out here real quick and have a little bite to eat. It's about 5.30 right now and we're filming. I always love filming outside in the evenings. It's so beautiful, the light is softer, and all the colors just pop. So hopefully you're enjoying your summer evenings in the garden too. Yes, this is definitely my favorite time to film as well for all those reasons. Very good, Callie Kim. <laughs> I knew you liked it. Now here right off the deck is kind of my seedling area. Now we've talked a little bit about starting new seeds um, for, the late, for late summer harvest. And here is where I like to start a lot of seeds. And it gets a couple hours of morning sun here. Actually started a whole entire tray of the profusion zinnias. Because in the late summer, sometimes, you know, things start to die off and you definitely want to have plants um, and flowers going so you can pop new ones in when old ones die. So I've got some sunflowers, some onions I still haven't planted. I have planted some, but not quite all of them. And some basil and some of the New Zealand spinach. <sighs> I think <laughs> Mac is liking the camera there, right? <laughs> So um, let's head down the hill, and I, I'm so excited to show you guys around. And I also want to hear how your gardens are doing too. Okay, come on down. Now I think on the June garden tour, this trellis was not even filled in yet. The Scarlet Runners are taken over and I couldn't be happier about that. One thing I love about the Scarlet Runner beans is that the hummingbirds absolutely love them. So I've had a few comments of people saying, how do you get so many hummingbirds in your garden? The Scarlet Runner bean flowers, they absolutely love. They love the color red. So they'll come here, feed on the flowers, and then head over to the hummingbird feeders right on the deck and we get to enjoy them. They're absolutely amazing birds. But the great thing about Scarlet Runner beans is they also produce beans, not just flowers. These are beautiful, super tasty, tender beans. You wanna pick them before they get too big or they're just way too tough and stringy just before the pods start to bulge, which this is perfect. I'm sure I have some overgrown ones in here as well. Here's a good one to show you. Because the seeds are gorgeous and you can save the seeds once they dry out to plant. I'm just gonna break it open here. To plant next year. And I have these in my bean seed collection. <laughs> And you can even plant these right now because Scarlet Runners go from seed to harvest in about six to eight weeks. Look at that seed there, isn't that beautiful? 
So plant some now and you'll have some towards the end of the summer to harvest. Now here I have my herb garden. I love having an herb garden close to the house because I can pop out, grab some herbs for recipes. In fact, every day I've been coming out and grabbing cucumbers, tomatoes, and basil and just having that for my lunch. So it's a really nice, healthy, quick garden lunch. Now, here we've got more scarlet runner beans on a trellis here. I absolutely love these. They are super fast growers, like I mentioned before, with some hanging baskets. Now, the hanging baskets are kind of coming to the end of their summer lives here. These little Johnny Jump Ups or violas really like the cooler weather. They get partial shade here, but with the heat we've had lately, they've kind of seen better days. So I will be replacing those probably with some of the profusion zinnias I just showed you and maybe some herbs. But down here in the herb garden, I want to show you guys, I'm loving how things are kind of spilling over the edge. Even these runner beans here are kind of trailing down over the edge of this raised bed. The chives are hanging over, the strawberries are kind of hanging over the edge. So make sure that you plant spillers in your raised bed that spill over the side. It makes really good use of your space and it looks so pretty too. Oh my gosh, I love these zinnias. They're, the color is just absolutely stunning. Yeah, the garden is so colorful right now. We just sit after dinner and just watch all the wildlife. There's so much going on. Where are you going? I was just going right over here because I have okay. to show everyone this really cute little profusion zinnias. I actually got a whole bunch of different types of varieties of profusion zinnia seeds this year. I can't remember what this one's called. Let me see if I have it labeled. Chippendale Daisy Zinnia. So I love how delicate it is. And just look at those colors. They're just so, so pretty. And I'm gonna tell you a little tip about zinnias when we get down to some other ones that are a little bit larger. Now back to herbs for just a moment. If you want some herbs, that'll really take the heat. Plant rosemary, thyme, and sage. This sage I planted, I think uh, last summer from a small little transplant I got at the garden center. And look how beautiful it looks. Now I know it's got some weeds in it. You know, even Cali Kim has weeds, but it looks really pretty. And we've been using it a lot in a chicken marinade. I marinate my chicken with lemon juice, fresh lemon juice, sage, and then rosemary right here. So if your herbs are starting to look a little bit tattered, this one actually has maybe a few spider mites on it. You can chop off your perennial herbs like your rosemary and your sage and your thyme and they grow back. So that's something that is really nice about those particular herbs. Now I do want to show you something in the corner here that's not exactly a success story, but you know what? We've got to be real. It happens to everyone. Right. I popped in a, um, what's that called? A sun gold tomato. I just thought, you know what? I'm going to try something and just kind of let it hang over the side of the raised bed just to try it. Well, I kind of forgot about it. I didn't really trim it up and I know it looks absolutely terrible, mm -hmm. but the cool thing is it still has tomatoes on it. So you know what? It happens, you really can't go wrong. I gotta grab one of these babies. I'll show you another sun gold in a moment that looks really, really good. But Jerry, I've actually been uh, popping these in some of our salads. They are seriously like eating candy. They're so mm -hmm. sweet and so delicious. They are really good. I want you to listen for something for just a moment. Hear that? That's seeds rattling around. This is a poppy that is going to seed. Do that again. Isn't that cool? Oh, that's crazy. I didn't know they did that. I know, pretty neat. So when the poppy flowers, or a lot of different flowers, once they dry up, they uh, develop seeds on the inside of the little pods. And once they dry up and rattle like this, you can collect the seeds and save them for another use. See those little poppy seeds popping out there? That's how you kind of rub the flower between my fingers. Yep. Now the great thing about poppies though is they will drop their seeds and reseed next year. One of the most exciting things I was looking forward to showing you on the garden tour was the sunflower forest. These are absolutely going crazy. They're probably, I don't know, what would you say Jerry, 15 or 20 feet tall? at least, and just loaded down with flowers. And would you believe these mammoth sunflowers are all volunteer, which means they all came up from last year, either from the birds dropping seeds or from the seeds falling down from last year. So there's just so many blooms. They're covered in bees. We can sit up on our deck and just kind of almost be eye level with them and watch the bees buzz around. It's just so much fun. So if you have a chance to plant sunflowers in your garden, it's actually not too late to grow them from seed right 
right now, as I talked about on last week's video, six crops you can plant in July and August. They grow fast, they love the heat, the bees love them, and then one little plus about the sunflowers is when you get a nice thick stalk, like these are right here, and I'll have Jerry come down and get a shot of this in just a moment. You can leave these in, they dry up, and you can use them for stakes or trellises for next year. So absolutely loving it. It provides us a nice little shady spot down here if we want to come and sit down under this raised bed or just enjoy a nice little moment in the garden. These are here for us. So let me know what varieties of sunflowers you're growing in your garden too. Now I have to say that this little area here is one of my favorites of the garden this year. I just love how all the flowers are coming in. The zinnias are gorgeous. This is the salmon queen zinnia from my zinnia seed collection. Isn't that an absolutely lovely color? And a little tip with zinnias. Zinnias are actually a flower that you can grow all summer long. You can plant them now. They grow quickly from seed to harvest. See, not seed to harvest, seed to bloom in probably about six or eight weeks. And Jerry, I want you to get this little zinnia trick up here. <laughs> what you do to encourage more blooming of zinnias. Now you might have a really hard time cutting off your blooms, but you can bring them into the house for cut flowers. And the more that you prune them, the more they grow. So Jerry, I'm gonna prune this right here at the, where, this, where the leaves kind of branch out. Are you getting that shot there? Let me come down. Here's a bee. Oh my gosh. So if I prune it right here, snip, it's going to encourage the zinnia to branch out and produce a lot more blooms. So let me know if you've ever tried that. I know you guys, it's hard, but I'm telling you, you're going to love the profusion of zinnias that you have when you do this. And grab one of my zinnia seed collections because there's all kinds of different colors of zinnias in that. You're gonna absolutely love it. You can get 20% off with the code late summer and uh, grab yourself a bunch of seeds. One thing I'm so excited about for the summer is the dahlias. It's my first year growing dahlias from tubers. I actually gotta get up here and show you guys this dahlia. You guys might have seen my Instagram post when these were just tiny little, I guess, tubers is what they're called. They kind of look like ginger root. Um, but look at them now. They're just so beautiful. The stems are nice and thick. And I have a, another one blooming on the other side of the yard, but this one is just about ready to bloom. I just cannot wait. They're just so beautiful. And then all in here along this trellis, this is the gardener's I believe it's called the Zenith Trellis. Trying it out for the first time this year. Really loving it because it has this nice little round spot in the middle where the cucumbers are just really, have plenty of room to trellis and grow. And this cucumber plant is just absolutely loaded down with flowers and cucumbers. Um, there's lemon cucumbers. Look at this one. This is like a, almost like the size of a baseball. This is from my cucumber seed collection. And cucumbers are another one of those vegetables you can plant all summer long. You definitely want to plant them every two to three weeks. Right now, it's so much easier to start with fresh plants than it is to try and save plants that might not be doing so well. So plant some seeds and uh, you will be so glad in the late summer when you have plenty to harvest. Now in here I have uh, some Tiny Tim tomatoes. Kind of succession planted these this year. So these were planted um, from seed and I put them in the garden bed here. I want to say maybe a month to six weeks ago. Lots of flowers, lots of Tiny Tims coming on. So I've got some Tiny Tims finishing up and then these will be ready right behind them to uh, harvest at that point in time. And then the chard here, I think I'm gonna show you this on the last garden tour. This was a huge chard plant, which I cut back. It was actually flowering and I cut it way, way back and chard will grow right back when you do that. So now I have plenty of fresh chard to put in salads and chard's one of those heat tolerant greens that you'll love to have in your summer salads. In, over in here, we've got some of the KX kale. It's a beautiful purple kale. These leaves are getting nice and big for wraps. I'm just kind of letting these go right now. I've got a few little bugs in here, probably the little cabbage loopers on these. And over here, I planted some arugula, which is going to seed. But you know what? I'm not too worried about it because I actually planted this to cover my ugly drip irrigation <laughs> setup here. So I kind of wanted them to get tall. Arugula loves the cool weather. So if you're coming into fall, or when you come into fall and cool temperatures in your area, grab one of my fall garden seed collections. Arugula is in there. It's a perfect cool weather green to grow in the cooler months. Now cucumbers definitely do need something to climb on, so make sure you plant yours on a trellis. 
There are just so many cucumbers once we get back in here and pull back the leaves. Look at this lemon cucumber. It's almost baseball size. It is huge. Does it taste like a lemon? No, it actually just looks like a lemon, but it tastes like a regular cucumber, but it's really fun to eat because it's so unusual shape. And down in here, there's some uh, markamores, I think this is. In fact, I'm gonna pick this one so that we can have it with our dinner tonight. This is a beautiful cucumber, a perfect size. Market more is in my cucumber seed collection, and these are so tasty. In fact, I just got some hummus today, so that would be a really nice Ooh. little snack for tomorrow's lunch, too. That would be good. And there's tons more down in here. This whole section is just loaded down with cucumbers. Nice. We have got problems here on little tiny Tim, unfortunately. Do you guys know what this is? When this happens, I mean, when you see this in your garden, when all your leaves are stripped from your tomato plant, it's a sure sign of a hornworm, either a tomato hornworm or a tobacco hornworm. You do not want them on your tomatoes. I have not seen one yet on this plant. I've actually been looking at it for a while here, trying to find it. Um, sometimes you can come out at night with a black light and find them. This little guy, or actually it's probably a big guy by now, all it's eaten has not shown up yet. So I'm gonna keep looking for it. But what you can do, what I usually do is I either um, toss it in the green bin where it can munch away on other plants, or if you, you can also toss it in a bucket of soapy water or spray your plant down with insecticidal super soap if you have a big infestation in your garden, which I may end up having to do because I've been picking maybe 10 off this week from different plants. And I'll show you another sign of the hornworm in just a moment when you go to another plant. Now here's the part where I show you a sun gold tomato plant that looks a lot better than the one up at the top of the hill. This one here is looking absolutely beautiful. It's a nice healthy plant loaded down with beautiful sun gold tomatoes and I'm actually growing this one on a little arch here um, and this arch if you haven't uh, seen any of our videos before is made out of what's called ladder mesh. You find this in the masonry, masonry department of your local um, hardware store and it's two very long pieces. I think they're about six feet or so long and then I've tied them together in the middle with some cable ties and then right here is going to be my tomato archway here so this side we have sun golds oh yeah one more thing <laughs> it's supported with a t-post it does kind of get heavy when it gets you know loaded down with tomatoes or cucumbers or whatever you might want to grow on it so put a nice sturdy stake if you're gonna do ladder mesh. But it's super inexpensive. I wanna say maybe around $5 a piece. Now over here, we actually have a mystery tomato, but it's looking absolutely beautiful. Look at this gorgeous, huge tomato. This might be one of uh, Cliff's uh, tomato seeds that he sent me. He grows giant tomatoes out in Idaho. He's one of our live stream moderators. Beautiful, but when my tomatoes were seedlings, I dropped the tray and all my tags fell out. <laughs> Save the seedlings, right. but I don't know the variety of a lot of the tomatoes I'm growing this year. If they're new to me, I'm not sure what they are. So this plant, Jerry, if you wanna come around the other side, this has gotta be one of Cliff's tomatoes, maybe the Domingo. So Cliff, I'll send you a picture, but if you're watching, let me know what you think. But look at all the tomatoes on this plant. They're very large in size and uh, starting to ripen. Wow. Here's what I was talking about. Another sign of a tomato hornworm. See those black droppings there? Yes. Yep, sure sign. And there's also some stripped branches here. My plan is for it to grow up over the ladder mesh and meet the little baby sun golds in the middle. So maybe on the August garden tour, it'll reach for the top. Very excited to show you the vertical watermelon. You guys remember when we did that video? It's always fun on the garden tours to give little updates. But we built this trellis. This trellis is actually in my new book, Raised Bed Gardening. And we planted some watermelon underneath it. I don't remember how long ago. But the plant looks absolutely beautiful. And guess what happened this week? This little baby, it's little right now, but this is going to get big. I think it's called Charleston Gray from what I recall from my melon seed collection. I'm gonna be trellising these on a net or supporting them with a net. So make sure you stay tuned and subscribe because we will have definitely more videos on this. But it's working great. It's climbing up over the trellis, not quite over the top yet, but you can see there's tons of flowers, tons of vegetation on this plant, looks super, super healthy. And underneath the trellis here, I actually planted some uh, 
cooler weather greens that would benefit from the shade. So I've got some arugula under here and we have been harvesting arugula like crazy. I've never been able to grow much arugula in the summertime before because it just gets too hot. But the strategy of growing it under a trellis in the shade of the larger um, uh, vegetable or fruit here is working really well. So let me know if you tried that this summer and what greens you're growing in the shade. Now here I've got a zucchini going absolutely crazy. And my intention was to grow the zucchini vertically up a tomato trellis here, but I kind of missed my window of opportunity for feeding some of the branches up inside the trellis. We were gone for like out at Gary's for a couple of weeks or a week or so, and uh, I didn't want to try and break off a lot of the stems. But you can grow zucchini up a trellis. You feed the leaves up through the cage, um, the tomato cage here as it grows, and then you can actually trim off the bottom leaves that are below the flowers and the fruit. Now down in here, I've got a couple of zucchini coming on. We've already been harvesting several off this plant. Jerry's been grilling them up. They're so tasty. Very tasty. And these will be ready to harvest probably in a couple of days or so. Now you can let them grow, grow longer and get to be baseball bat size if you like. They're not quite as, well, they still taste good, but they have really large seeds. But with those, I'm sure a lot of you had the baseball bat zucchinis. You can make like zucchini bread or um, some type of baked goods. So let me know what you'd like to make out of your baseball bat sized squash, because I know we all have those around our garden. Now you might have noticed there's tons and tons of flowers right now. Uh, I've just been planting uh, zinnias this summer like crazy, one of my favorite flowers. So it's really pretty to see all the color pop in the garden. And you want to put your flowers right in with your vegetables because it brings the pollinators in right where you need them to pollinate your vegetables. So here in this little shorty, um, we actually planted a brand new cucumber on last week's video. Um, this one here is kind of starting to die out a little bit from the heat, but the new one is already starting to take off. It's okay, Mac, I got it. <laughs> Don't move, Mac. And um, so when the, the cucumber here on the trellis is ready to take out, we'll have a brand new one to take its place. So if you haven't watched the video, Six Crops to Plant in July and August, make sure you go back to watch that because you'll know exactly what vegetables you can plant at this time of the year. Can't forget Tiny Tim over here. Look at this. <laughs> Had a little tomato hornworm attack too, but this Tiny Tim is absolutely loaded down. If you've never grown Tiny Tim, Really good tomato to plant this time of the year because it's a smaller dwarf variety, only gets to about two feet tall. Perfect here in Little Shorty, which is a three foot raised bed, the fabric uh, Smart Pots raised bed, and got some hornworms on it, or did. But the thing about Tiny Tim is it's what's called a determinant tomato. So it only grows about two feet tall, produces all of its fruit. Uh, pretty much at the same time and then dies off. So if you see your determinate tomato is starting to kind of look like this, don't panic. It's just part of the genetics of the plant. That's why I like to plant tiny tims at different points in the summer. This one went in in the spring. I've got some that just went in and uh, you can grab tiny tim seeds from my late summer garden seed collection over at CaliKimGardenHome.com. That way it spreads the harvest out and you have another tomato to take its place once this one dies. I want to show you the passion fruit vine. It is doing amazing this summer. But before I do that, I just saw here that one of these massive Ace 55 tomatoes fell off the vine. It got too heavy for the vine. This is a beautiful slicing tomato. It's very heat tolerant. And this plant is just loaded down. Jerry, I don't know if you can get any of that because they're kind of behind back here, but they're beautiful tomatoes. Oh yeah, I got them. Absolutely lovely. I think these are in my spring garden seed collection. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, you definitely want to grow Ace 55s for the heat tolerant. Now, oh, there's a little red one. Now let me come, oh yeah, I wanted to say about this tomato here is, uh, if your tomato does fall off the vine or if you want to pick them early because you're having critter issues, as you can pick them at first blush. And this one does look like either it's just starting to blush or maybe got a little sun scald. But pick them right when they start to turn and then you can take them into the house, put them on the countertop, not on a sunny windowsill or not in the refrigerator. Or put them in a paper bag and the ethylene gas will release and it will help them ripen a little bit quicker. So nice little tip. Now let's head over to the passion fruit. Now I've been showing you the passion fruit vine on several different garden tours. This thing is absolutely loaded down. Jerry, if you can come in here and get a shot maybe. There's probably 40 or 50 fruit on the vine. 
and for some reason they seem to be taking a really long time to ripen but this is a purple passion fruit and you can see it's just starting to turn isn't that beautiful yeah that is gorgeous there's just tons and tons and tons on here all over the place so we should be able to do a harvest of passion fruit hopefully sometime this month let me know what you'd like to make from passion fruit because we're going to need some ideas there's tons of them in here in fact a couple fell off today just noticed here they actually um, are ripe when they turn purple or when they just fall from the vine but these fell off and they obviously aren't quite ripe yet so we'll bring you along for that now in the heat of the summer you might have noticed your lettuce starts to bolt lettuce is a cool tolerant green it likes the cool weather best so here I actually left some in that are bolting um, because what you can do is once they do bolt and in case you don't know what bolting is it shoots up a tall stalk from the middle. These have been bolting actually for a couple of months. Once they bolt, the lettuce turns bitter, doesn't taste good, and it flowers like these are right here. Now, when the flowers dry up though, the cool thing is you can save the seeds. So these flowers are all dried. And if you shake these little, I'm gonna pick one actually, it'll be easier to show you. I'm gonna do a video on this hopefully this week. But if you shake this little flower here, you got little lettuce seeds that fall out. Uh -huh. So that way you can save your lettuce seeds for next year and have some free seeds. Isn't that cool? Now I realize this is just a little bit longer of a garden tour, but there's just so much to show you in the summer garden. So camera guy, are you getting tired of filming yet? I'm doing good. <laughs> good. Okay, well we are going to talk about the beans here. We planted these beans, I don't know, maybe six weeks or so ago. You guys remember that how to grow beans all summer long video? They are going crazy in the little shorty. Uh, this is a three foot um, long here, fabric raised bed. And what we did is we put nine bean seeds in each little section. There's three sections here, the little shorty. It's a perfect growing machine for beans. And they are just going crazy. So look at these. We need to get out here and harvest these, Jerry. I think we gotta do a harvest video next week. Yes, so we've got, close. aren't those nice? So we've got, I think those are the slenderettes from the container garden. Uh, the red burgundy bush beans and the bean seed collection and there's just a ton a ton in here and uh, these definitely need harvesting I love the red burgundies because they're purple on the vine they turn green when they're cooked but they're just delicious delicious beans so make sure you do succession plant your beans plant them every two to three weeks throughout the summertime that we'll have lots of harvests as you go throughout the summer into the fall. Now let's move over here into the uh, two, two by four Smart Pots Urban Raised Bed. We have got some Golden Jubilee tomatoes, but I gotta show you guys, we're having some squirrel issues here. I decided to really go heavy with the squirrel protection here and use my little one gallon Cali Kim Smart Pots because yeah, there ain't no way they're chewing through these. But I have got to show you this tomato under here. There's actually two of them, the Golden Jubilees from the raised bed garden seed collection. Aren't those beautiful? I just love these tomatoes. They're super sweet, beautiful orange beef steaks, and we've already harvested several off this plant. And I do not want the squirrels to get these, so I'm gonna cover them back up. I can definitely see why you're protecting those. Yeah, these are good ones here. And I got the last of my nasturtiums kind of hanging on. Nasturtiums actually are a nice trap crop. What that means is some of the pests that you don't want on your other plants will go towards the nasturtiums. I don't know if I've got any on here. I actually just trimmed these this morning. They had a ton of aphids all over them. Does that, oh, here's some. It's actually a good thing because they'll go towards the nasturtiums. See little black spots there? They'll live on the nasturtium leaves and hopefully um, stay off of your tomatoes. So another good reason to plant nasturtiums besides the fact that they're an edible, beautiful flower. Now the peppers in this uh, raised bed here are going crazy. These are, I believe they're poblanos or anchos. I always forget. One is, I think anchos is when they're dried and poblanos when, is when they're on the vine here or on the plant. They're beautiful, gorgeous, huge peppers. We've already picked several to have in salsa. This plant here is just loaded down. Look how tall this pepper is. It is just doing amazing. And I gotta show you right behind here, the Malabar spinach. We talked about this on the heat tolerant greens video. A very heat tolerant green. It's just a beautiful kind of climbing spinach here. And it doesn't taste quite like normal spinach, but it has beautiful little pods. 
beautiful red stems. And that's from my heat tolerant green seed collection. So definitely get yourself some of that planted. It's very, very easy to grow. We've had some really hot temperatures over the past few weeks. Let me show you what happens to peppers when they get a little bit too hot. They get something called sun scald. You can see the plants are just a little bit wilted. I think my drip is scheduled to go off tonight, so that'll give them a nice little lift. But they get something called sun scald, which is kind of a thinning of the pepper wall here. And um, that, could, that pepper is actually still gonna be fine. I left it on the vine because it's not quite ripe. But what you can do is you can cut your pepper, when you harvest it, you can cut that part off and your pepper is still perfectly fine. But these are the California Wonders. They're supposed to be um, red. That's why I left it on a little bit longer. But often when you plant your peppers close together, like I have mine in here, they kind of shade each other and help prevent the sun scald. But you can see this one, has nothing shading it, so that's why it got that. So along here, I have several different varieties of peppers planted, kind of still waiting on a lot of them to get, whoops, this one just fell off. <laughs> Guess that one's ready. Uh, I forget what variety this is. I probably have the tag down in there somewhere. Looks really good. Mm -hmm. And here's a California Wonder, just starting to ripen here. You can see how it's starting to turn. So you can really pick your peppers at about any stage when they're fully ripe or when they're just a little bit green and then just see how you like them best. Down here, right next to you, where you're standing, Jerry, mm. is some gorgeous Black Beauty eggplant. Now, the cool thing about this plant is not only the beautiful eggplant, would you look at this? Look how shiny it is. Yeah. That is a sign that it's ready to pick. So I think our first video next week is going to be a harvest video, and then we'll maybe do a barbecue. <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah, it would really be fun. But this plant had a ton of spider mites on it. Um, you can see the sign of spider mites is a speckled leaf here. So if you see that in your garden, um, it's usually when you turn the leaf over, there's usually teeny tiny spiders. You can't even see them on this leaf um, that will quickly destroy your plant. So I always prune off any spider mite leaves as soon as I see them because they'll take over. They'll form little webs over your plant. It'll eventually just suck all the sap right out of the stems and leaves. They like the hot, dry weather, so they really thrive in California in the summer. Jerry, you gotta get a shot of how beautiful the hill looks right now in the evening. I just turned around and looked. You can look up there, I can see the giant sunflowers, the tomatoes coming in, the zucchini, the watermelon. It's just such a beautiful sight. We've really been enjoying it. So let me know what your favorite spot in your garden is, especially in the evenings. I wanted to show you the summer salad station. We planted this up a couple of weeks ago. You might remember that video. These are all heat tolerant greens. It is thriving, even in the heat. This is the New Zealand spinach. Isn't this beautiful? I just love how it trails over the uh, little smart pots here. The kale is doing beautiful. This is the, um, the ruffled kale, the blue scotch curled kale. It's beautiful KX kale. And then of course we can't forget the red Russian kale right back here with the beautiful pinkish purplish leaves and the red chard. And these are all from my heat tolerant green seed collection. So you can still grow your salads in the summer heat. Now I gotta show you right here too. This is a 15 gallon tan smart pots with scarlet runner beans. So when the other ones at the top have died out, this is a brand new fresh crop. They'll be ready to harvest probably in a couple of weeks because see these flowers? The beans will be coming along soon. And this is just a really simple uh, trellis made out of bamboo poles. I think they're probably about eight feet tall and it's tied at the top with twine. This design is actually also in my raised bed gardening book. Very simple, very inexpensive way to trellis. And while we're at it, we might as well show you what we just planted up on last week's video. Have it covered with shade cloth to protect it from the heat and some of my little tiny Tims kind of took a little beating this week from the heat, you guys, even though I'd hardened them off. So, you know, it was probably in the 90s or so. So we may have to replant those, but the basil we planted from seed just a week ago, almost exactly a week ago, was already popping through. So get those late summer veggies planted and you'll be good to go. Got some squash, another squash coming up here. We'll be harvesting these into August and September. 
Another absolutely massive sunflower here in the pepper planter. I call it the pepper planter because we have lots of peppers in here. But this thing has grown here now for a couple of years. Not the same sunflower, but it grows back year after year. It drops its seeds. But if you notice, this is a, what's called a branching variety of sunflower. So it doesn't just have one flower at the top or one main stem, it branches out. There's tons and tons of flowers. So what I need to actually do is get up here with a ladder and trim some of these off because then the flowers will grow back. So if you've got this kind in your garden, do make sure if you can, you keep them deadheaded is what I like to call it. And you'll get lots, lots, lots more blooms. But I got to take you back here and show you my favorite flower of the summer so far, the dahlia. Let's go. So excited that the dahlias are finally blooming. You can see how tall it is here. It's probably three or four feet tall. Have it tied to a stake. And this was the very first one I planted and the very first one bloomed. And would you look at that color? It's that deep purple. It's absolutely beautiful. Now it doesn't get full sun here. Dahlias really do better when they're planted in full sun. So I can't wait to see the ones that have bloomed that are actually in full sun to see if the blooms are bigger and if they get more blooms. You can see the first flower is spent. So we need to trim that back for lots more blooms. So here in the, our new raised bed kitchen garden, we just built this all this year. It's so much fun. Put in the A-frame trellis. The watermelon and the cucumbers are going crazy. So you might have seen the video we did a few weeks ago on how to support watermelon. It has grown almost, I don't know, maybe doubled in size. Wow. Actually, this video, this wasn't actually on the video. I think it was on my Instagram, but it's just supported with a little piece of tool because when you're growing vertically, you don't want the stem to break. So you gotta put some kind of support in so you can get some nice ripe melons and all of your hard work doesn't go to waste. And underneath the trellis here, I still ha actually have some endive growing. So it's doing pretty well in the shade. The romaine has started to bolt. And at this time of the year, you guys, I just wanted to let you know, it's okay to pull plants out that aren't doing well, that maybe are struggling in the heat. You can see in here, these beans have pretty much reached the end of, your, uh, end of their life. So I'll be harvesting all these off here, probably in the next couple of days, pulling these plants out. And I probably won't replant anything right now because the squash, the scallop squash is going absolutely crazy in here. I know it's all the good soil that we put in when we filled this bed, but Jerry, you got to get down in here and see the scallop squash. Oh, this thing is pretty. Isn't that beautiful? Now, ideally, you'd want to harvest it when it's quite a bit smaller, but we were out of town, so I kind of missed that one. Uh, but this one will still be good. We'll slice it up on the grill. We maybe even make some like little squash roll-up type things with uh, goat cheese or something like that. And I think that'll be really fun. But you can trim up and prune up your squash leaves. Anything below the squash or the flowers, you can trim, manage the plant size, even grow them up over stakes up on stakes that is, to help keep them up off the ground. Look at this one here, this is beautiful. I just love the scallop squash. They're just such a lovely variety. These are actually in my late summer garden seed collection as well, and in the raised bed kitchen seed collection. Gorgeous. But come on back in here and take a look at the watermelon. This one is, I think, possibly gonna outgrow <laughs> its support here. This is an avocado like produce bag. Actually might stretch just a little bit. If it gets too big, I'll just untie the bag and put like a pair of pantyhose on it, like I did with this one right here. Super excited to show you the cut flower garden. I think last time I had just planted seeds. I'm loving it right now, you guys. The zinnias are just starting to bloom. So uh, here, I'm not too sure what that variety is. I can't remember. It's probably the California Giants because the California Giants are a mix of colors, but I just, pack this baby full of zinnias. I know they're really planted close together. These are the giant cactus mix from my zinnia seed collection. They're really, um, really thin little petals. So I'm so looking forward to them blooming. Did I say cactus seed collection? <laughs> I think I meant zinnia uh, seed no. collection. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, but along in here, there are also a lot of dahlias. So very excited to see how these look. I've got some shorter kind of border type dahlia. Actually, these are the border type dahlias right here little teeny tiny buds just coming on and some larger taller varieties that I actually just planted not too long ago so they're still uh, in process but look at all the zinnias back here so pretty 
loving the color it's bringing in pollinators like crazy and this cucumber here actually just volunteered and i decided to leave it in and kind of train it to go towards different trellises because there wasn't a good spot really to put a trellis in here so i just kind of directed the vines if you can see at the base here there were several different vines i directed them to grow and i'm just kind of weaving them up through different trellises so i've got one here I've got one coming over into this tomato cage right here. And I'm training one to go around the front to the tomato cage on the other side. A couple other really pretty flowers back here. Oh, you gotta see this dahlia bloom. Not quite open yet. Isn't that pretty? Another great summer flower is the Gerbera daisies. Now in California, they're a perennial, which means they'll come back year after year. They actually grow, will go year round here and the cool thing about them is you can cut them way back so for example this flower here that is done it's a spent flower you can take this off and then the flowers will grow right back so even when they almost look completely dead you can even cut the leaves and the um, stems way back to the bottom and they'll pop back up for you in a warm climate like we have here in california now, as I've been talking about in my videos on Instagram, in our, in our live streams, there's some vegetables that you can plant all summer long. My three favorite are beans, squash, and cucumbers. Plant them every few weeks. Right here, we just planted these beans um, a couple of weeks ago, or actually on last week's video, I'd started them from seed indoors. And these are fresh new plants that will take the place of these beans over here that have been growing for quite a while. And you can see they're kind of looking a little ratty from the heat, just kind of coming to the end of their lives. We've harvested a ton off this plant. There's actually a lot more to harvest right now. Now with beans, the more you harvest, the more they grow. So the more beans you get. So once they start to come on, you got to get out here and check them daily. Harvest them about this size, maybe about pencil thickness like these are. They're perfect. Grab the plant in one hand, the bean in the other, snap them off and then you kind of have to lift the plant up because they like to hide underneath. And then in a couple days, you're gonna have some more beans. In fact, here's a little baby one right here. I guarantee it in probably about two or three days, that one will be ready to roll. Okay, so the Golden Jubilee, beautiful here in the Cali Kim 10 gallon smart pots. But here's another little thing you can do to protect from rats or squirrels. Grab these little net bags, and the link will be down in the video description. I picked them up on Amazon. And just wrap them around your tomatoes. Maybe you can save a few, a few of your special ones that way. But these are just about ready to pick. I want to try and leave them on at least another couple of days. So fingers crossed, wish me luck that the rats or the squirrels don't get them first. One of my favorite parts of the summer garden every single summer without fail is the blackberries. These plants probably are going to be the most productive I've ever had this year or the, since I've been growing them. And the blackberries, we've already picked several off, are just amazing. They're huge, they're ripe, they're juicy, they're sweet. Jerry, you've been having some of these too. They look so good <laughs> off the back of my viewfinder right now. Oh my gosh. Aren't those amazing? And frequently what I'll do in the mornings is come out here and just pick blackberries and strawberries and have my breakfast right out here in the garden. But these plants are absolutely loaded down. There's a ton right over here. You gotta get a good shot of those. In fact, one of our friends was over a few weeks ago. I gave him some of the blackberries. He couldn't believe how sweet they were. Oops, we got some bugs in here. And uh, he went to Costco the next day and got some blackberries because he kind of got a hankering for them. He came over the next day and he goes, the Costco ones were not near as good. They were such a letdown. And I said, well, come over the next time they're ripe and we'll, we'll give you some. Can we eat that? Yeah. You gonna try it, camera guy? Mm -hmm. mm. That was really good. So delicious, I gotta have one too. We haven't had dinner yet, actually. Mm. That's really good. There's just nothing like it. Purple fingers. Yeah, nothing like it. I just want to thank you so much for joining us on this evening garden tour in the summer in July. It's been such a pleasure to walk around the garden with you. Yep, loved having you all along. Absolutely loved it. Head over to CaliKimGardenHome.com. Use the code late summer for 20% off all my seed collections, my smart pots, and signed copies of my books. And 
three really good seed collections to grab this time of the year are the Late Summer Garden Seed Collection, Plant Them Now for Late Summer and Fall Harvest, Heat Tolerant Greens, and don't forget, fall is just around the corner, crazy enough, so grab a Fall Garden Seed Collection so you're all set to go for the fall. Let me know how things are going in your garden this summer. We would love to hear about it. Read about it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next, next video. video.